Welcome back to another episode of NA Now. I'm Brandon Hofstra, joined here with Bismarck Bobcat head coach Lane Sedevy. Lane, how's it going, buddy? Not bad. How are you? We're doing good. We're doing good. Let's uh, get right into this from uh, last season. Obviously, an incredible run for you guys um, that second half of the season. Uh, what turned things around up there in Bismarck? Yeah, it wasn't a, wasn't a great start, but um, I think just having the inexperience, I mean, it's one of those things that this level in this league is very tough. So, um, you know, we had 19 guys that hadn't, you know, played at the level and it, it, it took them quite a while. I would say uh, a lot of people probably, you know, wrote, wrote them off. And, um, you know, I think the, the group just did a fantastic job with, with sticking with it because, you know, come Christmas time, it was uh, the light at the end of the tunnel wasn't very bright, but, um, you know, they kept fighting and, and, and found a way. Um, probably one of the best memories I've ever had as a, um, you know, even as a, as a fan um, and, and being able to stand on the bench with that group. Let's, let's talk about what kind of got you guys there as well. Um, you made the playoffs in that final game of the season. Um, then you pushed St. Cloud to the limit. Were you satisfied? Obviously, you, got, you guys t- took on the top team out there, but um, just talk about that that feeling. Yeah, I mean, I think clinching in game 60, I mean, really, when you look at it, it was like uh, you can call it the perfect storm for us and Minot. Um, we had a snowstorm. Games were delayed. The cities were shut down. I think, you know, Minot got 40 inches and we got 18 or something like that. So kind of crazy and how it all played out. One of our biggest rivalries to have it come down to to game 59 and game 60 was was just special. I think for our fans, our city, it was, uh, you know, the the buzz around the city. I haven't seen it since probably 09, 10 when, um, when Byron Poole was here and won, won the Robertson Cups. So, um, yeah, I mean, I thought, uh, I mean, at the other day, that's your goal. I mean, your, your ultimate goal is to win a Robertson Cup, and that's, that's uh, pretty evident. I, I think every coach uh, that you're going to interview is going to say that. But to do that, you gotta have a, you got to have a chance. And, and uh, you know, to me, having so many returners back this year is uh, a big thing when I look at it from the big picture is having those guys, uh, you know, play a good St. Cloud team. And, I mean, we were – we were five minutes away from moving on really when you look at that series and uh, you know, one mistake cost us. And um, I thought our guys to, to get that, um, you know, playoff experience. I mean, you look in, you know, national hockey league, if you don't have that experience, you usually don't have success. So now we have a good core group coming back that, um, you know, got experience in the playoffs. And, and I, and I think it's very crucial. We'll kind of get into that later on here in this interview. Um, but let's kind of talk about last season, like you said, and you stated you guys kind of lit a, lit a fire underneath yourselves that second half. And is, do you think that momentum is going to carry on now into this upcoming 22-23 season? Well, I mean, I think that's where you look at your, you know, your leadership group. And, and I thought our leadership group was fantastic last year. And to me, that's that's where it's got to start. And, um, you know, we get – we get. Uh, a lot of those guys back. I think that's probably the most exciting part is you don't, you know, you, you don't have the, the crystal ball and say, yeah, we're going to go, you know, this record here. And, um, but they know how to get it done and they know how hard it is to win in this league on a, on a you know, any given night. I mean, if you don't show up, it, it doesn't matter who you play or who you think you're going to be. It's, it's not the case. It's just the, the, the league has gotten too tough. So, um, you know, I think that's the, that's the intriguing part for, for myself and, uh, my staff is knowing that those guys know what it takes to win at this level. Let's talk about the NAHL draft over the summer. Um, you guys had, I believe, four picks. You went all forwards. You guys have a decent amount of returning guys that are, especially on the back end. Um, talk about the draft, and then talk about this kind of the makeup of this team with returning guys and who you look to lean on for leadership in this upcoming season. Yeah, I mean, I think if you looked at our draft, it was it was very obviously forward heavy, and um, you know, we returned pretty much our whole decor, and so that was uh, we we tendered a couple other D before the draft, so we felt really good back there, you know, and then we went for uh, we went for some forwards, and um, you know we have we have eight back from last year, and um, our, our two our, our two captains Patrick Johnson, Nico Shmoveski, um, you know, and then guys like Calvin Hansen who. Um, you know, I think had 33, 35 as a rookie. Drew Holt had similar numbers. Paul Huglin, Brandon Reller. Um, you know, so there's, 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 you know, eight or nine guys up front that are coming back too. So, um, you know, to me, that's you, you try and build the best hockey team, and you try and address all the all the holes or areas that are concerns to you. And you know, that was a big one for us is is, is getting some de- uh, some more depth up front that we thought was really going to push us over the edge. Let's talk about uh, some of these NCAA commitments you guys had last year. There's 10 total. Um, how rewarding is that as a coach to see that? And does that continue to be the main focus, obviously, in the, the league of development, the NAHL? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just a feather in the cap for the league, really. I think, the, you know, you, you're a part of it. And, um, 
you know, I think I think our commissioner and everybody that that is involved in the league for, you know, the 13 years I've been a part of this league, it's just um, it's it's gotten to be I think what you know maybe market had had envisioned. Um, I guess the end game, you you never know if you're going to get there, but we're there. And um, you know, for a coach to have that many commitments, and if you look back, it's 12 and 14 and 16 or whatever. I, it's the numbers have gotten crazy. I just think it speaks volume of of what everybody has done um, and created one of the best leagues in junior hockey. I just think it's so cool, um, you know, for everybody that's a part of it and, and, and to see how, how the showcase has evolved, how, you know, the, the scouts come in, um, you know, seven hours driving here, driving there uh, to come watch a player. It's just, uh, it, it's really neat. Speaking of players, you have been uh, known by Alex Curious as the goalie guru. You got a few new ones here now with the Bismarck Bobcats, but how do you determine who's the, the next great Bismarck goaltender coming up? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's just, um, it's something that, uh, you know, I was I was the former goaltender that, that Alex alludes to, but uh, it's something I know very well and just I'm comfortable. I think it's such a sensitive position. I think you can look at it as, um, you know, an NFL quarterback, an MLB pitcher. Um, yeah, I think you have to, uh, you have to be able to, um, communicate with those guys uh, when you see stuff that's wrong. I think the, the 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 interesting part is when I get goaltenders here, they have a lot of their tendencies that are already developed through uh, their career, and I and I don't I don't really believe on changing stuff. Uh, I want to work with them uh, when they come in and we watch film and say, hey, this isn't working for me. Uh, what should we do here? And I think that's uh, that's kind of how I guess I've evolved my coaching. Uh, philosophy is I, you know, they, they have their habits. They're, you know, they're 17, 18, 19 years old. Uh, let's really fine tune it. Let's get to work and, and, and really look at the areas that are of concern when you go back to, um, you know, the map and where you're getting beat. Obviously, the season starts here uh, right around the corner in mid September. How excited are you to be up and playing for the showcase? Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, last year was a tale of two teams. Um, one of those things where I, uh, you know, sat all summer and just was so proud of the guys. And I think it's uh, it's exciting to be back um, and, and on the ice and, and really get things going. I mean, the showcase is, uh, I don't know, it's one thing we, we have not really had success in Bismarck is, is doing well there. Um, I, I guess it's the old cliche, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. But um, just a cool event to see all the colleges and, you know, uh, NHL scouts, whatever it is, uh, a lot of friends and um, familiar faces. So um, it's a great opportunity for our guys. I don't think there's a better opportunity in junior hockey where, you know, that many um, schools are under one roof. So, um, you know, I think the big thing is, is, you know, we, we wanted to come in actually for the first time we came in a week earlier, just as everything is pushed so fast and just make sure our guys are prepared. It's such a big, uh, uh, you know, big time for them, four games to four days and, and just making sure we're ready to go. You know. Summer flew by, season's on the way, and we wish you nothing but the best this upcoming season, Coach. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time.